this is Andrew P. Dore and welcome to my channel. It was 2nd of June 1953, the location was Westminster Abbey London, and the occasion was the coronation of Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor. On the 6th of February this year Her Majesty the Queen became the first British monarch to celebrate a Platinum Jubilee, marking 70 years of service to the people of the United Kingdom, the realms and the Commonwealth. Throughout her long and distinguished reign, Queen Elizabeth II has been presented with gifts of great value and historical significance, and a great part of this gift is the magnificent jewellery and tiara collection. A spectacular display of craftsmanship, these fascinating jewelries and tiaras come from more than 100 countries and across every continent. In today's video we are just going to look at gifts received by the Queen on occasions of her wedding, birthdays, royal visits and gatherings. Tenth on our list is the flower basket brooch. It is a gift given by King George VI and Queen Elizabeth to mark the birth of Prince Charles in November 1948. The Queen, then still Princess Elizabeth, wore the brooch for Charles's first official photograph. Although Elizabeth's maternal joy is evident on her face, the black and white portrait doesn't show off the true colourful joy of the brooch, as it's set with diamonds as well as sapphires, rubies and emeralds. Elizabeth made the brooch a regular part of her jewellery wardrobe in the years after Charles's birth. In October 1949, she wore the brooch during a visit to a council estate in Ilford. Even after her accession, the brooch has remained a central part of Her Majesty's jewel rotation, especially in recent years. In 2013, she sentimentally chose the brooch for a very important family event, the christening of Prince Charles's first grandchild, Prince George. The presence of the brooch at the christening provided a visual link between baby George with his great-great-grandparents, who would undoubtedly have been thrilled about the little future king, and his name. Ninth on our list is the Bahrain Pearl Drop Earrings. It is a wedding gift to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip in 1947, by Hamad bin Issa al-Khalifa, the Sheikh of Bahrain. According to the royal collection, the original gift was a large shell containing seven magnificent natural white pearls, and two of these pearls were used to create this pair of earrings. Pearl diving in Bahrain was first mentioned in Assyrian texts dating to 2000 BC. And pearling was the principal industry in Bahrain prior to the discovery of oil in 1932. The golden age of pearling is stated to have been between the 1850s to 1930, when pearls were more precious than diamonds and had attracted jewelers like Jacques Cartier to the country. There were around 30,000 pearl divers by the end of 1930. Making the wedding gift given by the sheikh was one of the most prideful possession. In 1947, just before she announced her engagement, the then Princess Elizabeth went on a tour of South Africa with her parents and her sister. She celebrated her 21st birthday during the trip, and she received a pretty impressive birthday gift, diamonds. At the end of a ball held on her birthday at Government House in Cape Town, South African Prime Minister Jan Smuts presented the princess with a diamond necklace made by Garrard. 
featured 21 large brilliants, one for each of her 21 years, interspersed with smaller baguettes and brilliant stones, set in platinum. The largest diamond in the necklace weighs 10 carats. The present was improved upon even more when a detachable snap closure was added, using a 6-carat diamond that had been given to Elizabeth three days before her birthday by Sir Ernest Oppenheimer, the chairman of De Beers. In 1952, Garrard revised the necklace, shortening the piece. Five of the large brilliants were removed, as was the De Beers snap closure. Those stones were used by the jeweler to construct a bracelet to match the necklace. Even though they're among the oldest pieces in her personal jewel collection, Her Majesty still wears the South African diamonds today. Seventh on our list is the Andamuka opal necklace and earrings. The Queen's extensive post-coronation tour of 1953-54 yielded several jewels for her collection. The South Australian government wanted to present their new queen with a stone their region was known for, the opal, and set about finding the best example around. The chosen gem came from the Andamuka opal fields and had been found in 1949. Known simply as the Andamuka opal, it is thought to be the finest opal ever discovered there and is praised both for the intensity of its colors and for its overall size. The cutting and polishing were completed by John Altman, and the final stone weighs a whopping 203 carats. Adelaide Company Vents Limited set it into an ornate scrolled necklace made of diamonds set in 18-carat palladium and created a pair of matching earrings, each with an opal pendant. The Demi Perua was presented to the Queen in Adelaide in March 1954 on behalf of the people of South Australia. Sixth on our list is the ruby and diamond floral bandeau necklace. It is a wedding gift from Queen Elizabeth's parents, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. This necklace was a part of the jewellery collection left to Queen Elizabeth by Mrs. Greenville. It was purchased from Boucheron in 1907. The Greville ruby and diamond floral bandeau necklace hadn't been worn by the Queen since the 80s. In 2017, it finally made a reappearance on the Duchess of Cambridge, who borrowed the gem for a Buckingham Palace banquet for the state visit of King Felipe and Queen Letizia of Spain. The Queen wore it again for the first time in over 30 years in 2018 at a dinner, as a part of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Fifth on our list is the Williamson Pink Diamond Brooch. The diamond is said to be one of the rarest flawless pink diamonds in the world and is the second most valuable brooch in her collection, with an estimation price of $33.9 million. The pink diamond set at the center of the brooch was discovered at the Williamson Mine in Tanzania in 1947. The owner of the mine, Canadian geologist John Thoburn Williamson, decided to present the uncut diamond to Princess Elizabeth as a wedding gift. The court jeweler explains that the rough gem, which weighed in at 54.5 carats, was displayed at St. James's Palace ahead of the royal wedding. Williamson, reportedly keen to avoid the grand social situation that would accompany a personal presentation of the gift, had it presented by a representative instead. And in 1948, the princess turned to Clerkenwell diamond cutters Briefel and Lemmer to transform the rough diamond into a faceted gem. Newspaper reports from that time reported that the young princess went to check on the cutting process with her grandmother, famous jewellery aficionado Queen Mary, who asked numerous questions of a technical nature during the visit. After the visit, the 23.6 carat diamond was finished and displayed as part of a major exhibition in London. With the diamond now ready to be mounted in a piece of jewellery, Princess Elizabeth looked to Cartier to create a suitable setting. The brooch, made of platinum with 203 white diamonds was completed in 1953, 
the year that Princess Elizabeth was crowned Queen Elizabeth II. The brooch is thought to be a favourite of Her Majesty, worn frequently on special occasions until the present times. Fourth on our list is the Dubai Sapphire Suite. Buckingham Palace reveals what the late ruler of Dubai gifted Queen Elizabeth 43 years ago. In 1979 during Her Majesty's tour of the Gulf countries, Sheikh Rashid of Dubai gave the Queen this magnificent set of sapphires as a gift from the rulers of the United Arab Emirates. It is made by Aspreys London and consists of diamonds and sapphires set in gold. Her Majesty was said to have exclaimed in amazement when she first laid eyes on the set. The original demi perure consisted of a necklace, earrings, a brooch, and a ring. The Queen later had the set modified by converting the earrings and brooch into a bracelet and shortening the necklace by two hoops and converting those hoops into new earrings. In 2002, the Queen wore the Dubai Sapphire Suite for the All the Queen's Horses event during at the Royal Windsor Horse Show which portrayed the historical connections between the royal family and horses, to celebrate the Queen's Golden Jubilee. In 2005, the Queen wore the entire Dubai Sapphire Suite with Queen Alexandra's Kokoshnik tiara for a dinner hosted by the Canadian government in Edmonton to mark the centennial year of the provinces of Alberta and Saskatchewan. In 2021 the Queen loaned the earrings from her Dubai Sapphire Suite to the Duchess of Cambridge during the NHS staff to a drive in cinema, to watch a special screening of Disney's Cruella at the Palace of Holyrood House. This tiara is certainly the Queen's favourite in her collection and it might be ours too. The Girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara was made by Garrard in 1893, in a swag and scroll design, with a lozenge band at the base. When Princess Elizabeth married Prince Philip in 1947, Queen Mary decided to make the tiara one of Elizabeth's wedding gift. She presented her with both the tiara and its base, and both went on display with the rest of Elizabeth's bejeweled wedding presents. Originally, the tiara featured 14 up-ended teardrop pearls in place of the brilliant diamonds at the top, giving extra height. The current brilliant diamonds were added in 1914 from another tiara in Queen Mary's collection. The tiara came to be in royal hands via Queen Mary, then Duchess of York, in 1893. Money was raised by Lady Eva Greville, one of Mary's ladies-in-waiting, to purchase a tiara as a wedding gift. It cost £1,600, estimated to be about £207,000 in today's money. The extra money was needed to be raised, some £3,000, to be donated in charities supporting the widows and children of the victims of the HMS Victoria, which had sunk in the Mediterranean that year. As with many tiaras, it can be worn as a smaller coronet and even a necklace, but we have never seen it this way. The bottom section of the tiara, a row of lozenges and circles, was made to be detachable, as a bandeau, right on trend for the turn of the century. Thirteen of the pearls from the original tiara design went into the Lover's Knot tiara, once loaned to the late Diana, Princess of Wales, and now worn by the Duchess of Cambridge. In recognition of the gift, Elizabeth still reportedly calls the diadem, Granny's tiara. It quickly became a central part of her jewellery wardrobe, first as a princess, and then as Queen Elizabeth II. In the twilight years of her reign, the tiara has become one of the only diadems that the Queen regularly wears. She has chosen it for several important recent occasions, including the landmark state visit to Ireland in 2011. The tiara's classic design will surely make it a favourite of royal ladies in the future as well, but it's somehow difficult to imagine anyone else wearing the Queen's signature tiara. Second on our list is the Queen's Nizam of Hyderabad Parur. On the occasion of her marriage in 1947, Princess Elizabeth was positively flooded with gifts. According to the official list of wedding gifts released by St. James Palace, Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip received exactly 2,583 presents. Not all of them were jewellery, in fact, the most common gifts were stockings and books. 
One of the most beautiful gifts came from the Nizam of Hyderabad. The Nizam was the owner of one of the most celebrated and largest private jewelry collections in the world, and his gift was suitably impressive, a demi perure of a tiara and necklace. The necklace was purchased from Cartier. Actually, in a way it was acquired by Elizabeth herself, the Nizam wasn't in London at the time and left Cartier instructions that the princess will personally choose her present. The necklace was created by Cartier in 1930s. It consists of a long chain of 38 diamonds with a diamond-encrusted snap. The center of the necklace is favade with detachable double-drop pendant 13 emerald-cut diamonds and a pear-shaped drop. The original necklace consisted of eight double-drop and three triple-drop pendants. However, nine of the pendants, all eight double-drop and the larger of the triple-drop pendants, were later removed and sold separately. The Nizam of Hyderabad tiara wasn't a set with the necklace although it was in the same general style. It was also personally chosen by the Queen from the Cartier stock, as per the Nizam's instructions. The tiara consisted of one large and two smaller roses surrounded by leaves, all diamond encrusted. The roses were detachable and could be worn as brooches. The Queen wore this tiara from time to time until 1973, the last time it was seen. After years of speculation, it was finally confirmed in Hugh Roberts's The Queen's Diamonds that the tiara was broken up to create the Burmese ruby tiara. Most of the sparkling tiaras worn by Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom were legacies from queens and princesses past, but a few of them have been hand-picked or commissioned by the Queen herself. Today's tiara, the Brazilian aquamarine, was ordered by the Queen as a part of an evolving perure of jewels. The Brazilian aquamarine perure didn't start with a tiara, it began with a necklace and a pair of earrings. These diamond and aquamarine pieces were presented to the Queen in 1953 by the Brazilian president as a coronation gift on behalf of the people of Brazil. The necklace had nine large oblong aquamarines each in a diamond scroll setting with an even bigger oblong aquamarine pendant drop. The earrings were designed to mimic the setting of the necklace's pendant. By 1957, the Queen had also commissioned Garrard to make a tiara to match the aquamarine demi perure. The tiara featured an elaborate diamond and aquamarine bandeau base, with three aquamarine and diamond elements placed at intervals. The Peru kept evolving, in part because Brazil kept generously offering more aquamarines to the Queen. They presented her with a bracelet and brooch to coordinate with the set in August 1958, and in 1968, when the Queen made her first state visit to Brazil. The Queen has worn the tiara fairly consistently since its overhaul, even though it's now one of the tallest and most imposing diadems in her collection.